on the part God, you may have your comfortable seats. First of all, let me extend my appreciation to the pastor who isn't present. He is somewhere else this morning. And also to Sister Bev and members of the Family Ministries Committee for giving me the privilege to stand behind this podium, you call it, and to share the word of God with you. I certainly celebrate your enthusiasm, your passion, and keeping on focus. And you are among, well, not all the congregations, I think, are celebrating, but at least you took note of it on the calendar of these special events. And you made sure that Family Togetherness Week took its rightful place. And based on what I have heard, you have had a grand time. And we thank God for all the presentations, the interactions, Sabbath School Superintendent. By the way, Sandra was asking me, who is that person? And I don't think I was able to identify her, but certainly very articulate young lady. I mean, a whole lot of talent. And uh, it's Miller. Oh my gosh, you really did sing. And my friend, Ina Desmond, and sisters who sang there a while ago. Ina, I was very surprised that you were singing in your shoes. I can't remember whenever I saw that happen. I always say, once Ina gets up to sing, trust me, bam, 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 those shoes are off because she's standing on holy ground. When I saw you in your shoes, still I said, mm, what's that this morning? But we thank all of you for your music, your ministry. Olivia, so nice to see you and full praise team, um, Travis, all of you guys, we thank you and Sabbath school teachers and the greeters and Vin, you're doing a wonderful job. You give me my microphone, make sure it's sanitized. You are one of the churches that tries, I mean, to really stay with it. I go to churches, I see them handing one microphone over and over, over and over, and nobody ain't doing nothing to it. But before I got up here, you handed me this. I don't think anybody else used it for the morning. And I am very thankful that your church is trying to do the best. Hey, by the way, COVID, that virus is all around us. And Trust me, it might be in some of us. I mean, that's how the life is. We will do the best that we can by the grace of God to take care of ourselves and also to take care of others. Would somebody say amen? So God is good. So we're bringing down the curtains on our Family Togetherness Week celebration. This afternoon, 3.30, you heard it announced. Um, all the men would be on the call on the platform for our virtual men's conference. Did I say 3.30? Yes, 3.30 in the p.m. It carries the theme, preparing men to fulfill their purpose in a time of crisis. When I sent the correspondence out, if my memory serves me well, I did say, yeah, the focus will be on the woman. Beg your pardon, the men, uh-huh. But the truth is, we also want the ladies, Marva, we want you to sit by your husband this afternoon, on that call on the platform and uh, just be a part of the celebration the ladies you just say oh you guys are doing so many things for ladies are wrong you don't do anything for men we want you to join with the men in that experience today so if you have your I nearly said something that's not so nice up here but if you have your husband your spouse your whatever you call him 
around then he is going to be on the call make sure that you join as well and of course we're not going to be saying anything that the children can't hear they, that's not a problem so we're asking families just come together come together on the set somewhere about if you have your hdmi you're making your connection throw it up on the big screen and let's just have a good time together as we strive by the grace of god to empower men to fulfill their god-given purpose in a time of crisis hey we need men see amen somebody and not just men but real men need to have real men around well i think we are good to go and uh, we should be out of here on good time you have a title on your screen fostering unity among the family of God. I'd ask you to stand with me for the reading of the foundation text for our presentation this morning. And after we'd have read the passage coming from John chapter 17, we do verse 1, we do verse 6, we do verses 9 and 10, and then we do verses 20 and 21. The praise team would lead us in one of my favorite praise songs. Praise him, praise him. We do that from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sea. God's family, kindly stand with us as we read the sacred word at this time. We're doing it together. If somebody has a microphone, you can also join with us in the reading of the word. So Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given to me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who would believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Would somebody say amen for God's amen. word? Let's praise him in this house in the valley this Sabbath morning. Come in front, come in front and lead him. Somebody sing. Praise him. Praise him. Praise I want to hear you from the back. I want to hear you in the back. Jesus. Oh, blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Somebody in this side, praise him again. Praise him. Heads 
Father, bow your eyes close, our Father and our God. We have come into this house to do one thing, and that is to praise you. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. You are about to speak to us as you have done in the past. We pray, O oh God, you give us the grace to hear you very distinctly this Sabbath morning. And Lord, we pray that your word would accomplish the purpose for which it is being sent. Your name would be exalted, your name would be glorified, and your people would be greatly blessed. This is our prayer, and we give you thanks for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have the comfortable seats. I think I see Pastor Keen in the house. Hand up, my brother. So nice to see you and have you. All the pastors are my friends. Um, Pastor Keen, of course, this is home base for him. This is home territory. And uh, since the was that volcanic eruption, man, he has been displaced. I don't want to say misplaced, just displaced and stuff like that. Can be in the congregations up there to do some stuff that he's accustomed to doing. But we are happy to have you in the house. And you probably might say to me, welcome. Pastor King, of course, was a student while I pastored the University Church in Trinidad. I can't forget, I, I can never forget Kenan when they have these international week and anything that have to do with culture and representing this country. Kenan, I still remember that big SBT flag that you used to be carrying, man. Just march into the auditorium. I say, there goes a proud Vinci. Vinci to the bone, really and truly. He's always been a person of action and passion. And of course, you know, he likes to dance for sure. I mean, and just give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. And he is an excellent preacher, really and truly, and a good foot soldier. He is one of those who visits his members, you know, and takes good care of them. Kenan, I'm proud of you, overwhelmingly proud of you. If I didn't get to tell you that for a long time, I think you're a great pastor. And I want to congratulate you up front in a few weeks' time. I'm going to lay the hands upon you, and you'll be ordained to full-time gospel ministry, along with your wife, Desin, who is also from right here of course and it's a blessing you guys have been a blessing and i want to wish you all the best if i'm not saying some things about you don't feel jealous really and truly the time will come when i'll say some things about you as well but my colleague my pastor my friend you know this is his day and i want to tell you we celebrate god's blessing and the great success that you would have had under the moving of god's holy spirit so today we have read from the gospel according to John. And who was this John? As we think about fostering this unity among the family of God. Well, John was one of the sons of thunder. He is one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. And a member of the inner circle. You remember that inner circle, Yvette? It would have been the Peter James and John himself. It seems as though they had some special privileges. And ever so often they would have said that John had this way of sitting close to Jesus and putting his head kind of on his shoulder or on his breast somehow. Pretty close by. John was one of those, if you remember, who Jesus took up on the Mount of Olivet. Some say the Mount of Olives. And on Mount Olives, Christ was transfigured. Peter, James, and John. They had the privilege of hearing Moses and Elijah talk with Christ on the Mount of Olivet. And they had the privilege of hearing the Father speak when he said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Would somebody say amen? So John, well, he had some special privileges. As a matter of fact, when the disciples were taken into the Garden of Gethsemane, and Christ said, I want you guys to stay there. I'm going a little further to pray. He also took Peter, James, and John with him. This guy, John, was really one of the special guys. Some people say, Jesus, you're playing favorites. Well, I don't know. Jesus had a right to choose whoever he wanted to choose. And he had a right to keep close whoever he wanted to keep as close as he did. But he did that, and John was one. You remember that on Great Friday... Your Jesus and my Jesus was executed on a hill called Golgotha after they placed the Roman timber on his shoulder and we whipped him in Pilate's judgment hall. You know the story very well. And before Christ breathed his last breath and gave the triumphant sound or message, 
It is finished. He looked across from that cross. He looked at Mary, his mother, and he said, Woman, behold your son. He was talking about John. And straight in the eyes of John, he said, John, behold your mother. What was he doing? From that very day, Jesus was saying to John, I want you to take care of my mother. Hey, can I say something to us? This is not in the script, but we have an obligation to make sure that we take care of our parents. Say amen, somebody. He is dying, but he's making sure that he gives the last testament and will, if you would. John, my beloved, the one who lay on my breast ever so often and who had privileges that other disciples didn't have, I want you, the loving John, the beloved John, to take care of the mother who meant so much to me. We're talking about John here this morning. What a wonderful thing. And then there came a time when that John, that same John the Beloved, was made an exile on the Isle of Patmos. Those who ruled things back then didn't like what people like John were doing, not at all. And because of their faith, they banished him to the Isle of Patmos in the Mediterranean Sea. What was he supposed to do? He was woken in the quarry, the stone quarry. I mean, breaking or pounding stone under the blazing sun. Is anybody at home? Without a pay, no salary whatsoever. You know, we make a fuss about our small wages that we get. Well, when John was sentenced or banished to the Isle of Patmos and to break up stone under the blazing sun, there was not a cent coming to his pocket. But bless the name of God, you want to celebrate with John this morning. While he was there on the Isle of Patmos having a rough time, hear me, separated from friends and family, hear me this morning, God gave John a panoramic view of the trials of the people of God and also the triumph and the ultimate victory which the people of God will experience one of these days. Wow, bad times on Patmos. But God is coming now with consolation. He said, John, look at this. I'm showing you scenes. Church age, from the beginning, coming right up through the dark ages, the time of the persecution. But a day will come. Hallelujah. I don't want to preach this morning. Sandra, what do you want me to do? She would say sometimes, don't use PowerPoint because I'll slow you down. But I'll still use it anyhow. But Jesus said, I want you to see something. You're breaking stones now. Your back, yes is tired you got no salary it's hard out here you did not take away anybody's wife you did not break in anybody's house hear me you are not involved in prina larceny hear me john please and you're suffering like this but hallelujah john praise god the day is coming when things will certainly get better and i want you to know if you're going through your hard times today it is not in the script Remember, hard times don't last forever. The tough people will, and those who trust in God will have the celebration one of these days. I have come by to tell us, and you know this by now, that God speaks through this beloved disciple that we call John, one of the sons of thunder. Let's listen to him as he rivets about four major points in our minds this Sabbath morning. Number one, the Lord has a passion for unity among his people. Say unity, somebody. Say unity again. If you're excited about that, say it one more time. Unity. You may not be able to define that, but you do have an idea of what it's all about. I think you spoke about this unity some time ago. It's not a nice thing when people are not united. I will not go into that. I don't want to stress you this morning. I want you to think on positive things. So think about unity. And unity brings a nice, warm, sweet feeling. If I spoke truth, say amen. It's good to be in an environment where there is unity. It's great to be in a place where there is peace, where there is love. And the things that are so wonderful that come to us from our God. Deep in the heart of your God and my God is that passion for unity among those of us who are called by the name of Christ. We see that from a prayer that came from the heart of love. I'm talking about the heart of Jesus Christ. 
When we read a while ago from John chapter 17, we are reading what we call the model prayer in the truest sense. Christ is now praying. In another chapter, in another reference, of course, he'd have said, this is the way that you should pray. And he told him, our oh, father, and stuff like that. But now Jesus, he's about to leave the good friends that he had made down here on earth. He's about to leave. But now he's talking to the father in a very intimate way. Would somebody say amen? He says, I do not pray for these alone. He's talking to his father. But also for those who believe in me through their word. That they all may be one. Say one somebody. As you father are in me and I in you. That they also may be one. Say one somebody. That they may be one in us. That a world may believe that you sent me. Where did I say that thing is coming from? It is coming straight from the heart of God. So when you hear some preacher gets up here and start to talk about unity and let me stop fighting in the valley and all that stuff and fighting down each other in the church, let there be unity. Understand it this morning? It is not coming just from a preacher. A fallen human creature, pastor, elder, deacon, whatever he is, but it's coming from the heart of your God. Can I say when we are not united, God takes a, a stress? There is a problem. He's not excited about it. Now God is going to help us to understand how we can strengthen the bonds. Are you sitting close to your wife? Pretty cool, Desmond. You can sit close to Ina, ain't it? Well, Sean, I see you sitting close to Gabriel. And by the way, when you guys got up here, Sister Miller may have heard me, I was saying, what are you talking about, Brother Bowman and Sister Bowman? What? But I guess you guys just wanted to be formal, ain't it? Oh my gosh, they're not saying anything to me now. Really and truly. You know, but I know you can sit close. You're close. You're in your own bubble. Really and truly. Sandra, where are you? Oh, way in the back. By the way, did I tell you it's always nice to have you? She knows that. I say to people in congregations everywhere I go, she is a big woman. As a matter of fact, if you have grown children, you're supposed to be a big woman. It is true that you got married when you were young. Yeah, dad had to sign. Yeah, and I myself was pretty young. Somebody say, eat us fast. Really and truly. So we really did get married pretty young. So when I see young people married and people say, hey, they know what they're doing. Beg your pardon. When I look at one time and I saw when our last son, 22 or something like that, I said to myself, boy, if Duani say I'm going to get married, I might faint. I said, he looks so young. And then I, I went back in my own mind and I said, but wait, at 22, you're standing before the altar and exchanging the vows of holy matrimony. So not because you're young, it doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. Say amen, somebody. There are a whole lot of young people who know exactly what they're doing. But God really wants us to be close. And you husbands who are close to your wives today, husband close to your wife, and wife close to your husband. By the way, it's Brennell. Brennell is somewhere about. Brennell is singing this afternoon somewhere about. He's going to be singing in men's conference. You say, yeah, pastor, you put me on the spot. Yeah, you're singing, boy. By the way, he sings well. By the way, I think this is a fantastic couple. Oh my gosh, you guys always look good. Trust me, keep it up. And make other people feel it's a nice thing to get married. You know, when you look at some couple, you say, that's where marriage is all about. Keep me far from that. I don't want nothing to do with that. Is anybody at home? But when you look at some couple, you say, wow, that nice. This really good. If this is what it's all about, bring it on. Is anybody at home? And every marriage, by the way, is supposed to reflect the beauty and the glory of Christ. Supposed to be a testament, a testimony of the goodness and the grace of our God. So God wants us in this Richmond Park, in this community of the redeemed, not only on this Sabbath day, but going forward to keep on strengthening the bonds of friendship and love. First of all, develop and nurture the love for Christ and others. Am I going too fast? I feel kind of hot. I feel kind of thirsty too. Uh, develop and nurture what somebody? The love for Christ and others. Only if I think what happens is that I put my water somewhere on the, one of those windows in the back there. Sandra has one, I think, in the back there as well too. It's really hot up in here. It is. Let's do this again. Develop. Go with me, everybody. Develop and nurture. No, you're not there. Go with me, everybody. Develop and nurture the love 
for Christ and others. You cannot have unity uh -uh, without love. Nah, it just doesn't work that way. But we really want us and Christ to say, look now, if you want there to be unity in this body of Christ yet rich in power, unity, come on, real unity in the family, you got to have a love for Jesus Christ. And you got to have a love for others as well. For your family members. Read with me Mark chapter 12, 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, Oliver, you can open it. I trust you. Thank you very much. This is not one for the road. This is one for the throat. By the way, those online, we are happy to have you. We're not trying to polish anything. This is coming raw, uncensored, unedited. This is how we keep church. When you get, drink, when you get thirsty, you drink. Go and play nothing and hide. No way doing so. No, when you get thirsty, you take a drink. Oh, bless the name of the God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your energy. And the second is like it. It says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That neighbor could be your spouse. That neighbor could be your child. That neighbor can be your parent. That neighbor can be just about anybody. What God is saying, if you want unity in the family, that is the, the family at home, that home circle, you really want to have family, I mean, that is filled with love and great bonds of love. You've got to have love for each other. I don't have to ask you if you got love for your spouse. That's a given. You may have heard me with this, and it's not no lie. I've heard it myself. I've been told if that soul called husband of mine is going to heaven, I would rather go to hell. There are some people like that. And they know you're going to glory. If your mansion is in the east, God better put mine in the west. Is anybody at home? Well, you know how it goes. You are sleeping in one bedroom and the spouse is in another one. It is already played out down here. When I hear that kind of thing, I usually say, uh, what kind of stuff is that? Well, hey, people understand that to be married, you understand what marriage means? It's coming together. People don't marry to go apart or stay apart. You're married to be together. That's what the Bible says. Therefore, you become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no one ever try to separate. Say amen, somebody. No, no, no. Like you don't like that in the house here this morning. So we got to love. And then you must place a high premium on the well-being of family members and others. What are we talking about? Strengthening the bonds among family members. Bringing us together here in Richland Park and wherever we are. Up there in Cotton Ground and over across there by Riverside. Wherever it is, God wants us to come together. Place a high premium on the well-being of family members and others. You must not only think about self. That is selfish. If you want it to be nice and sweet in church and in your family, you got to think about others. Say others somebody. Yeah, others. So let each of you look out, not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. I'm trying to pluralize that interest thing, but my tongue not allowing me to. Is anybody here? Don't just look out for your own thing. And we have some children who are pretty selfish. And some parents who are downright selfish. Some husbands who are really selfish to the core. And some wives who are not different. And all they think about is the me, the I. If I'm not happy, nobody will be happy around here. If I am not happy, every one of us will be miserable. Are you hearing me? 
But God is saying, you know what? Don't just look out for yourself, but look out for others. As a matter of fact, if possible, strive to make others even happier than you are yourself. Say amen, somebody. That's how we can get a happy family here in the valley, in this community of the redeemed in Richland Park, down there in Mespo, in Yambu, over there in Liverstream, where your pastor is now. We have got to look out for others and think highly about others. Then we must do what? We must identify with family members in all the experiences and this has to do with the joy and in the sorrow hey, hear me somebody i think you know this text rejoice with those who rejoice and for those who are online and you may not be able to see our graphics let me tell you this is coming from romans chapter 12 and verse 15. rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep it's COVID season i can't come close to you Hey, come on. There are times when some families do have reason for rejoice. But instead of rejoicing with them, we're there in the back and we're wishing that they didn't have the cause for rejoicing. Is anybody at home? There's jealousy. There's envy. There's malice on the inside. You're probably saying, I wish it was me. Why them? Lord, why are you blessing them and not blessing me? Why is there a child who is in the exam and my only scrambling and trying to float in a sea? Is anybody here today? I am talking to us today. If somebody else's child succeeds, hallelujah, rejoice with them. Raise your flag. Beat your drums. Oh man, just celebrate. Celebrate. Identify with family members in church in their good times and in their sorrows. And when a family member dies, belonging to another family, you will feel the pain on the inside. Take up the phone, the smartphone. Get a WhatsApp message going. Take the TikTok. Do whatever you want. I mean, just do something. Say something and let them know there is somebody, somewhere, who cares about somebody out there. Say amen, somebody. Are you in the house this morning? Identify. You know how it feels when you lose a loved one and somebody takes up a phone and gives you a call? Long time we used to send cars. That's going out of style now. We have the electronic means. We can get things across very quickly. All those emojis that we have. I mean, it's easy to say, I am with you. I love you. I am weeping along with you. I feel your pain and your sorrow. And I'm praying that God will see you through. Henry, what are you talking about in this house? We're talking about fostering the bonds of unity in the family of God, the church family, and our families out there. Oh, let's give God the praise. Then develop the habit of affirming others. Say affirm. Say it one more time. Affirm. Yeah. There are times when people do things well. Sandra, I hope I do that enough. I have a way of saying. We have a way of saying at home. Sandra, girl, you just know how to make something out of nothing. I mean, it sounds like God, but it's not blasphemy. Eh? If you leave me in that kitchen, I look around, look in the cupboard, look here, look in the top cupboard, eh? look in the pantry there, look there, there. It had none to cook. Yeah, it had none to cook. So that is it, it had none to cook. She will come into the same kitchen. I mean, the same space. And before you know it, bam, 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 ay, ay, ay. I mean, there's a meal there. And there's taste, there is class, and I can say, mm hmm, you really know how to make something out of nothing. And she's good, she's great, she has heard that. Sandra, don't think you're starving for affirmation, really and truly. You're a wife that's blessed with a man who bigs you up and makes you feel good. And by the way, you deserve it. You have been with me long enough, so many decades now. Goodness me, I am who I am and what I am by the grace of God and with you standing by my side. You know my flaws, you know my weaknesses. Oh, come on, you know it. And you still resolve by the grace of God. I would live with that man in spite of his imperfections. I know I'm talking about me, so you're probably not feeling happy about that. But what you're going to do is think about your spouse who is living with you, bearing up with you, who is just affirming you in spite of your imperfections. Hear me, somebody. By the way, why you look so somber and you look so cold? 
Ahali Sisman. It look very pretty. But nearly says my face. Hear me, everybody. Are you still at home, everybody? What are we talking about? We're already talking about fostering the bonds of unity among the family of God. To develop the habit of affirming others. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as in fact you are doing. Are you doing that in Richland Park today? Are you doing that in this community of the redeemed located here in the valley? Are you building each other up or are you tearing each other down? Say build up. Say build up. If you're not ashamed, say build up. If you're not guilty, say build up. Yeah, we shouldn't be tearing down. We should be building up. When we continue to affirm, you know, just tell people you have done well. You know, that's what I did, I think, when I came by and said, oh my gosh, that was real good music. You really sang your heart and soul out there. Wonderful. And Sandra said, who is she? I said, I don't think I'm very sure about it. She said, he said well, probably she should sing at men's conference today. Really and truly. <laughs> and I spoke to you about that superintendent already. Don't know exactly, I mean, who you are to the full. You might say, shame on you, snag. You should know. Really and truly. But I said, you articulate. I mean, you knew what you're about. I just get the impression here is somebody who has a program well planned. This is somebody who is on course. This is somebody who is pretty targeted, young, and looking into the faces of some of us who are way past our age. But you can see that there's a purpose, and she's getting on with it. And I think you got talent. I say raw talent and sanctified talent. Use it for God's honor and glory. The devil must not get one bit of it. Give all to Jesus, my friend. Give them all. And we have so many other persons, talented, Javel and those guys on the drums and a uh, person there on the piano and who's on the keyboard and Deso, you on your guitars there all the time. And all you song leaders, I mean, you guys are good. Keep on using your talents for the glory of our God. We are not saying you're perfect. And remember, you're not matching yourself up with anybody else. And you're not trying to outdo anybody else. All you're trying to do is to give God the best that God can get out of you. So it's no competition here to see who could preach better and who could sing better and who could pray longer and all of that stuff. Uh-uh, we're not in for that. We are in to give God the best. And when a child of God in this house or in your house at home, come on, it doesn't matter where, over there in Hopewell or wherever it is, when somebody in your house does something well, affirm that person it helps to strengthen the bonds then be what be honest and transparent with family members and of course with others speak the speak the speak the truth therefore put in a way what lying let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Coming home, Vin, don't lie to your wife. Yes, man, you wouldn't lie to your wife. Olivia, you will not lie to your husband. Speak the truth always. Let us not be speaking lies in this house or in our houses. Let's be honest. Let's be transparent. Speak the truth. Wow. Sometimes we just can't deal with the truth, I know. But we must speak the truth. Just a little stop us here on Facebook. You know, you've got so many things on Facebook. And here is this dude walking with somebody else and holding hand and going. And, you know, he's trying to say, well, I'm just out a little kind of late doing some stuff and what have you and thing. And she just say, I want you to look at your review mirror. Just look in the review mirror. He's walking. He's not driving nothing. Look in the review mirror. Bam. Look back. Who's there? Yes, his wife. Or you're on the phone saying you're somewhere else doing something else but she's right there seeing you holding another woman's hand she said take a look if you're driving take a look in your rearview mirror look back speak
speak the truth. When we don't speak the truth, of course, it's going to fracture your relationship. And then appreciate and practice what? Say it, everybody. And practice the golden rule. I need to get on very quickly. And just as you want men to do what? To you or unto you, then do likewise unto them. That's the golden rule. In the same way that you want to be treated, then treat others like that. We just read from Luke 6.31 for those who can see it. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. You want your family members to be courteous and kind? Then be that as well. You want them to be truthful, honest, transparent? Then be that yourself. And when everyone is courteous, is kind, is transparent, come on, loving, and everyone is seeking the interests of the other, you're going to have a kind of family that will bring glory and honor to God. Others will take note that you have been with Jesus. Wow. I must say it's none. Then earnestly seek in filling of the Holy Spirit. Somebody saying, preacher, you think it easy? God says, I know it ain't easy, but I have a secret for you. You say you think it is easy to do all that stuff? Be honest, transparent, be kind, look out for others, put others, the interests of others above my own interests and all of that, so that we can have, I mean, strong, uh, a united kind of experience in my family at home and the family of God? God says, I know what you're talking about, but it's possible. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. We associate this with the power to witness, and that is true. But Christ is saying in the word, we shall receive power to do anything and everything that needs to be done when God's Holy Spirit is in full control. I can do all things. See, all somebody. Just in case you're doubting this Sabbath morning, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. By the way, Kimi, I didn't see you. But once Javel is here, I should have thought that you're somewhere close by. God bless you guys. I can do all things. You know, preachers already, they say anything and everything except blaspheme. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Say all again. No, oh, by the way, I want you to read that text with me. And read it with conviction. Here we go, everybody. I can do all things. Praise God. We are coming. The United Church is a powerful testimony of God's love and plan of redemption. And Sabbath School Superintendent, you are right on target. There are so many things that you said this morning that speaks to this as well. I do not pray for these alone, but for those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. When there is unity in this house, and when there is unity in your house, trust me, when there is love in your house and love in this house, the world out there would believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You commandment I give unto you that you do what? That you also love one another. And by this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Have the open air meetings as much as you want. Dance and prance and say, a soak, soak, soak. Yeah, do as much as we want. I mean, prance as much as we want. Come on, shout as much as we want. If they don't see love among us, and in us, hey, come on, somebody. They ain't going to believe nothing. They say, don't bother them. They're just a bunch of shaman pretends. Go learn to love your wife first before you come out here. Hey, come on, somebody. But Christ said, when there's love, oh, hallelujah. He says, the world will be convinced that I have come. And this is the final point. And I really took long to get here. And I beg the apology for keeping you in the heat longer than I plan to. The church will ultimately experience, or ultimately again, experience unity, perfect unity, with each other and Jesus 
who is the head of the church. Say amen, somebody. We are fragmented. We're divided in the here and now. But thank God, hallelujah, the day is coming when we shall be together. We have heard this so much at funerals. When I was preparing this message, I kind of reluctantly kind of introduced these slides with these two references. Because I've heard it so much at funerals that people are beginning to associate, I suppose, these with the funeral experience. Every time they hear them now, they think so much about funerals. But permit me to read these two verses in your hearing on Sabbath morning. It's not a funeral. With a loud command and with a shout of the chief angel and the blast of God's trumpet, the Lord will return from heaven. Then those who had faith in Christ before they die will be raised to life. That's verse 16 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, which is the last text for this message today. Next. Hallelujah. Next. All of us who are still alive will be taken up into the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the sky. From that time on, we all will be with the Lord forever. Say forever, somebody. Hallelujah. You should feel like shouting. Sometimes we are separated. Sometimes fragmented. Sometimes we quarrel because we first come on. And we will not go to the party to which we are invited because we don't like certain people. But hallelujah, the day is coming when all of God's children... The faithful one, filled with the spirit, anointed by the power of your God, will be taken up to glory. Whether they died in the faith or remain until Jesus comes. And the Bible says we shall ever be with the Lord forever. Sandra, I'm going to transgress for the last time. It's not a hundred years. It's not a thousand years. It's not a million years. It's not a billion years. It's not a quadrillion of years. It is not a quintillion of years. But hear me. We are going to be with Jesus forever and ever. And some people say forever is a long, long time. But some of us say forever is not even time. Hear me, somebody. It's just on and on. May God give us all the grace to keep sweet with Jesus. Sweet with each other so that when that great getting up morning comes and there is reunion eternity with God's children from all the ages, you on my left, you down center, you over there including Sandra on my right and the humble preacher himself will be a part of that grand experience. If you would thank God today that reunion is coming, perfect unity I wanted to raise your hand. You just want to say, Lord, I thank you. You have a plan for perfect unity among your people. And if this morning you want to say, Lord, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that by the grace of God, I can be a part of reunion eternity. I want to live in the way you want me to live. But when you come to take those who should live in the way you want them to live, I'm going to be a part of that number. Kindly stand where you are. I may ask you to make a little move today for being asked to pray for our families. And if you consider your family to be a safe bubble, and it should be, I'm going to ask you this time to get close. I don't know how you can do this. I'm talking about families now. You blood families, I'm seeing you guys together. Praise God. Olivia, you're going to be in the praise team. You're singing. Brennan can come close to you. Can he? Should he? Could he? Would he? Somebody, somebody, no, I really want you guys to be close. By. I mean, I, I'm going to pray for families, but I want you to be close. By. Travis, anybody yet? Not yet. It's coming. Coming. No, guys, you really, oh, brother, you don't have your mask. Put on your mask, brother, and, and come close. Anybody who is in their family bubble, we just want you to be close. You, you can be close. I can be close to Sandra. We sleep together so we can't pretend. We can't do social distance. I'm not in that. Not for a spouse. So this is everybody close? In families? You sure? We got it? Well, we got a lot of people who are alone, really and truly. So we have you covered? 
You're standing by your spouse. You're with your children. And if it's a safe bubble, of course you can hold your hands. You can. You certainly can. Praise God. Praise God. Mm. Hands by his blood. So glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed oh, wash in the fountain. In the fountain. Mm. Cleansed by his blood. Join with Jesus as we travel in song. I am part of the family, the family of God. Oh, it's about our Father's heart on the inside here. But you know what? We don't want to complain. In some places, there are floods which are taking people away. So, you have given, we accept. We thank you that we could have come into the house and worship you as a family. In many places, even in the Caribbean here, churches are locked down. Right there in Grenada, they are under serious curfew and they'll be locked down and locked in until Monday morning. We thank you that in this nation we still have some freedom and we can come into your house and you can bless us with fellowship, the reading of your word, the moving of your spirit as we worship you as a family. Thank you, God, for what you have done for us in Christ. Thank you for paying the price for our redemption. Thank you for giving us a hope in Jesus Christ. And now we are praying. We are asking that you fill every one of us with your Holy Spirit so that we can love as you love, unconditionally. We can love our imperfect brothers and sisters. We can love our children even though they are not perfect. We can love our parents even though they let us down sometimes. And we can love our spouses with their imperfections. And we can love our neighbors. And we can love our church members in the way that you want us to. Oh God, help us this Sabbath afternoon. Fill us with that spirit again, we pray. And keep us united until the day when your children shall make it home to glory. Thank you for hearing us and thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I can only assume that those who are doing the closing exercise will ask us to keep standing. Then give him another microphone. Good evening, church. The closing song will be number 198, and can it be? We, dub we dubbed it as a, the hymn of celebration, so we celebrate on it. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused this pain, for me who him to death pursue. Amazing. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me. Amazing love. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? He left. He left his father's throne above. So free, so infinite is This is what he did. Emptied himself on above. And bled. And this was the only man. This was the only man. And 
free for oh my God it found of me a prince in hell how can it be that thou my God should die for me oh long my imprisoned spirit oh fast fast found in sin and oh thy I diffuse I will bear the chain flame. Oh, my chain fell off. My chain fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Amazing love. Oh, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? No condemnation. No condemnation now on dread. Oh yes, Jesus and all in him is Sing, mine. sing beyond the mass. All life in him, my living Bring it out, bring it out. Holy righteousness divine. Oh, bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Let us bow our heads to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for having brought us this today to, be, to worship with you and to have such a wonderful and powerful message imparted to us, dear Lord. As we end one week and begin another, I pray that we take some of the information given to us here today and we use it to further foster and empower our own families, dear Lord. I pray that we promote unity and togetherness that as a church, as a family, we go and we help and show others what it, meant, what it means to be a family, dear Lord. Thank you for everything and thank you for presenter or the presenters that have Bring us a message throughout, this, throughout the week, dear Lord. Pray that continue to be like you, to show others what, to, what it means to be a Christian as well, dear Lord. In your name.